On the autumnal equinox of 2014, it was drizzling. It is said that rain in the equinox indicates a harvest, normally in the following year. However, for villagers in Ding Village, Shangfen County, and Shanxi Province, the rain heightens the sense of urgency. It has been drizzling for more than 10 days, and the mature corn in the fields has grown moldy. Villager Ding Chen Run is anxious. Luckily, his brother Ding Zhen Zhong and neighbor Yang Man Quan have come to help harvest the corn as soon as possible. Corn goes bad during a pretty long rain just like this. It's a really bad day today, and we have come to help him with this problem and to rid his corn of mold. We want to, to speed up harvesting in case corn gets moldy. Yang Man Quan is not a relative of the Ding family. However, in Ding Village, neighbors come to help. In trouble or an emergency, no matter what your surname is, you can count on each other for help. Ever since the village was built, it has fostered a friendly spirit. Here in Ding Village, we have the Sanyi Temple. It is the most important temple in the area. I suppose there's a its story name, in its name. Right? Its name comes from a certain story. The Oath of the Peach Garden. There's a common saying in Ding Village that the Sanyi Temple came before the village. Located at the western side, the temple is the oldest building here, always watching and teaching the villagers to behave themselves as if it were a great elder gently caring for its children. On the walls of Sanyi Temple, one notices the inscriptions which indicate the repairs done since Emperor Wan Li's reign. The inscriptions say that Sanyi Temple was built during the second year of Emperor Weizong's reign. In the last years of the Yuan Dynasty, a war broke out in Hunan. A man named Ding Fu journeyed here alone to escape the war. At the time, the two families that lived here were the Ren and the Yin. The land by the Funha River had not been cultivated. If the land was to be used, there had to be a way to do so without creating conflict. Ding Fu met with the Ren and Yin families to discuss how to clear the uncultivated land. In doing so, they followed the example of the old tale, the Oath of the Peach Garden, to build the Sanyi Temple. They worked together and cleared the uncultivated land. Since then, working in utmost harmony has been the concept that has governed the village for centuries. In an agricultural society, to succeed alone is rather hard to do. One man isn't enough. When he deals with something big, uh, such as, for example, a natural calamity, 
the ancient people were quite aware of this problem. They always worked together. We say that a neighbor is more helpful than far-off relatives. The neighborhood is very important for every family. They rely on each other for help because every family in the world has its own troubles. Uh, if anyone is facing troubles or something great that they, they can't handle themselves, uh, then neighbors will come over to help them out. And um, their, uh, their greatest trait is they don't hesitate when they hear of it. A neighbor that is near is better than a brother that is far off. This saying is of particular interest to Li Long Wang these days. His son is getting married in two days time and he wants to hold a grand celebration. But there are only three of them in the family. A wedding like this requires many preparations, but they can't manage everything by themselves. Luckily, the neighbors have come to help. Li Long Wang is moved. The villagers are very nice, especially my neighbors. When they knew about the wedding, they came actively when we were in need. They didn't decline with excuses, none of it. The wedding feast is the most difficult part of the preparations. There are many tasks to be done, like washing, chopping, and garnishing the vegetables for the feast. It is noon. The neighbors who have come to help each get a bowl of noodles and sit around happily. It seems that working together has brought them closer together. Weddings and funerals are important to all families because a single family isn't powerful or strong enough. Therefore, the neighbors feel quite duty-bound that they must be part of it. To actively ask a family who looks like they're in need of assistance on what they can help with. This is a very human tradition that is being practiced up to this day by the Chinese people. Chinese people value moral etiquette. This kind of etiquette emphasizes the connection and feelings between people. The great learning, the doctrine of the mean, the analects of Confucius, and finally the Mencius, all talk about it. Men are all born good, with a kind heart, and a man will always try to help others who are in trouble. It is the day of the wedding. Li Long Wang's yard is packed with villagers who have come to celebrate. The bride is a girl from Taiwan, Shanxi province. She is dressed in a Western wedding gown, but the ceremony is held in the traditional Chinese way. A big day in your lives is marked today, and as your elder, I now announce family instructions to both of you. Be devoted to your parents and friendly to brothers. Work very hard and get on well with neighbors. It should be passed down for generations to come. Burn incense for your ancestors. There is one thing that is absolutely necessary in every wedding. In Ding Village, marriage means welcoming a new family member, and the ancestors should know about it. Okay, three bows to our ancestors. First bow, second bow, Third bow. Our worship has ended. A feast is a necessary part of the wedding. At wedding feasts in Ding Village, there is a traditional dish with a long history, the eight large bowls. In reality, there are 24 bowls, including eight bowls of soup, eight bowls of meat, and eight other dishes. Eight large bowls are made from ordinary food, but the process is complicated. To make ordinary food stand out, at least two ingredients should be used in one dish. Ding Bingxin is the only one who can make this meal. He may not be a talkative person, but his cooking skills are second to none. Steaming is the final step. This technique dates back over 3,000 years. The braised pork is called roast pork here. The eight large bowls is a banquet in Shanxi province. This banquet has a long history. It's mentioned as early as the Book of Songs, Lesser Odes. A model worker was awarded with the eight large bowls, and he was awarded by his own master. 
The Book of Songs mentions a total of eight vessels, and these were brass from Chang and from Zhou dynasties. During the feats back then, eight large containers were used for food and became the eight large bowls because the vessels disappeared after the spring and autumn period and warring states period. As time progressed, they later thought of and invented the bowls and started using them. To this day, we continue using these. In the Shang and Zhou dynasties, the only prominent cooking methods were steaming or stewing. Most of the dishes of the eight large bowls are cooked this way. In this way, the legacy of the Shang and Zhou dynasties lives on. The traditional Chinese principle of harmony is embodied in the eight large bowls. These are eight big bowls, eight small bowls, and eight plates placed together. We arrange it like this. Yes, all this food fully embodies harmony. In the spring and autumn annals, harmony was symbolized by a thick, soupy meal. Cook the fish with water, fire, sauce, vinegar, and plum. Water and fire are important. Sauce, vinegar, and plum are mixed. In order to cook and season the fish, it is delicious and is meant to reconcile and synthesize all the flavors that were added into the dish and create a delicious, beautiful taste. This is what we mean by practicing harmony. It is essential for the dish. Harmony has been passed on from our ancestors for over 3,000 years to this day through the annotations in traditional customs. In the spring and autumn annals, harmony was said to be like thick soup. Dao Fu Hai likens this idea to governing a village where people must work and live together in harmony. Forty years ago, Tao Fu Hai came to the village to do research on its archaeology and folklore. He is now on the council of both the Shanxi Provincial Institute of Archaeology and the Folklore Society. He has grown to love Ding Village and over the past 40 years has accumulated a wealth of research. Are these your collections? These are title deeds and letters. These are witnesses to the development of Ding Village? Ah, yes. They're from the Qing Dynasty. This right here is a manuscript called the Genealogy of the Ding Family. It tells of a story about their lifestyle and their history here in Ding Village. The genealogy was actually made by a villager here. A person wrote this in the 19th year of Emperor Chanlong's rule. It tells how his ancestor, Ding Fu, journeyed here alone from Hunan in the early Ming dynasty in order to start a business. This is one of the oldest genealogies. It shows the lineage of the Ding clan, which accounts for 70% of the village population. The inheritance of author Ding Bi Pang is written in great detail here. Twelve generations separate Ding Fu and Ding Bi Pang. Not only do we see records of the family inheritance, but also detailed accounts of production and daily activities. Private homes in Ding Village are arranged in north, middle, and south yards. We're currently entering the middle one. After we enter the middle yard, you can go ahead and have a look at the ground right here. Do you see the pattern? You mean this one? Yes. Is this a copper coin? Yes, it is. This is a copper coin, and this is a silver ingot. In the Ming Dynasty, priority was given to farming and studying. In the Qing Dynasty, people started businesses. However, these businesses were actually closely related to farming, and it was mainly a merchant-peasant relation, selling food, some cloth, and some dates. And that's how it's done. In Northwest China, after making money, villagers came back, bought land, and built houses to support the land. The village's economic development is divided into two stages. From the Ming Dynasty to Emperor Kangxi of the Qing Dynasty, priority was given to farming. Afterwards, the villagers started their own businesses, always taking the principle of harmony into account. Take ancestor Ding Shu, for example. When Ding Shu realized that the land in the village could no longer sustain his family's needs, he gathered his brothers to discuss, and they decided to acquire the neighboring land. Ding Shu's family now had another 200 mu of land. Combined with their own land, 
they now had a total of 800 mu. They grew wealthy from farming and collecting rent. When the granaries are full, there are rights and obligations to be fulfilled. Once the Ding family had become wealthy, they gave greater importance to cultural inheritance. Aphorisms left by ancestors were engraved on their temples and many halls. Ancestors must be worshipped and classics must be read. Descendants of the Ding family live by the words of the enlightened sages. In the Qing dynasty, during the reign of Emperor Shanlong, Ding Shishan became the very first first-degree scholar of the village. The Ding family became a well-known clan, but then the family encountered another problem. How could they preserve the family property that their ancestors worked hard for? They decided to split the family property along a diagonal line. Today, the family members of Ding Zhen Run have gathered together. Ding Zhen Run is the second son of a large family. There are four generations in all, 93 people in total. Ding Zhen Run's ancestors created a residential community which they called Middle Yard. Most of the rooms in Middle Yard now belong to the Museum of Folk Customs. His father and uncle still live here. So your family actually owns the whole middle yard? Yes. Well, all our family members still live in the middle yard up to this day. With what you know about this place, when do you think the middle yard was built? The 36th year of Emperor Qianlong's reign in the Qing dynasty. And how did your grandfather, your father, and you divide the houses among yourselves? The eldest took the south end of the east room. The second eldest, well, he took the west room. That was the sequence. Ding Zhenrun's father, Ding Gaosheng, and his uncle, Ding Risheng, live in both wings of the yard. Following the rules of the village when dividing up family property, Ding Gaosheng gets the first room of the left wing and the second room of the right wing. Ding Risheng gets the second room of the left wing and the first room of the right wing. Ding Chi Feng, Ding Chen Run's neighbor, adopted the same method. Ding Chi Feng's ancestor, Ding Shan Dang, and his brother, Ding Yang Dang, worked together to build a Chuda store. The store was successful and branched out to Lanzhou, Wu Wei, and Guangzhou in the south. Having amassed a large fortune, they began building a grand house. The house was eventually divided into five households. I have been personally living here now for so many years. Do you actually own this whole house? Mm, I don't. Many brothers lived here, several generations. The first one had two sons, and those two had six sons in total. Now there are many of us living here. Ding Chifeng's grandfather, Ding Wuao, owned one wing here. His relatives owned the other four wings. Another six wings of the house were distributed to five households. The family line must be kept alive. Why do you think that two households must share one wing? Uh, there was an old saying that states, ancestors feared a miser who may tear apart the house. This wing here couldn't be torn apart because the three rooms are connected with cross beams. Now you see the rooms are evenly distributed diagonally. It will be difficult to tear them apart. Keeping the house in the family has done much to preserve its integrity. The same goes for many houses in Ding village. Families may live separately in different wings, but they all live together in the same house. In Chinese culture, elders worry most about one very important thing as they grow old, and that is their family slowly splitting apart. Uh, um, someone gets married and leaves and then so does another and the family bond will slowly disappear in time. So the family will surely be broken up. There is absolutely no benefit from that. Uh, family culture will fail to be inherited. And I think that's horrible.
So I think that it's a clever idea to divide up the property in this brilliant way. It was split in a diagonal line. It teaches children that family members should always live together. In terms of the family system and the form of construction, the house is hard to be divided, and it is very clever. Dividing the family property in a diagonal line not only protects the house, but keeps the family together. The ancestors' instruction for their descendants has also been passed down. Children grow up here in big families, guided by their elders' words and actions and the inscriptions and plaques in the house. Now, when you think about it, um, we actually feel comfortable when we live in apartments that are so close to one another. But as it's known to all of us living there, we, we actually don't really know anything about our neighbors. We do not communicate. Well, we actually live with a very, uh, you could say, small families where no cultural atmosphere can actually be achieved. Uh, look back on our childhood, on how we lived our lives and how long it was living four generations under one roof we long for one thing and that is for a big family and that is our life the teachings of the ancestors are preserved in large families the principle of harmony has been a constant in the village's development over the years many people with different surnames have settled down here making the village their permanent home. Honesty brings harmony and unity and has been the rule of the villagers. That's why different families have gotten along with each other. For different families residing in the village, they all try to achieve this harmony by relying on trust between each other. This is our philosophy that is known as honesty. However, since its conception, much has changed. Ding village has never broken away from culture. Ding village has always been like this. Ding village has never, ever once broken its code of honesty. This means having good credit. That's how the village was built and how harmony has been achieved. Today, the villagers still adhere to their ancestors' instructions about living in harmony. When the village started to produce textiles, the spirit of harmony was also practiced in the workplace. After Li Longwang's son's wedding, he visits the South Yard. The weavers have begun their busy day. Ding Village's coarse textile has a long history. 76-year-old Wei Jin Yu operates a loom which dates back to the Ming Dynasty. When we begin our weaving, we listen. And then it starts roaring to life without any effort at all. It's the sound of the pedal kicking and another sound when we're pushing. <laughs> she remembers the men would help each other with one heart. And the women were loath to lag behind. Close neighbors are better than distant kin. Do you know what it means? Relatives just live too far to help. But neighbors are just close by. Fingers are closer to each other than to the palm. A hand span is far away, but the fingers are close. I started weaving when I was a teenager. One year, I helped others so much for 47 days. That is over a month of daubing cloth. Someone would ask me for help again and again. People would ask me to help them here and there. They were everywhere. How could I refuse? Did they them? ever pay you for it? Never. I see. But they did help me at other times. There are several procedures for traditional hand weaving. Spinning, wiring, warping, and weaving itself. Every step is important and everyone must cooperate. A single person can't make the cloth alone. It's because they must work together. When they begin to cooperate, they must focus and not become selfish. If ever you turn selfish, you cannot complete the task because of all the following steps are closely connected. If there's a problem in one step, then the cloth becomes worthless. The horizontal line is made by one person yes. and the vertical line by another. That's right. They slowly get together and become this coarse cloth. If ever something goes wrong with the lining of the thread, then, then no cloth will be made. It will be defective. There won't be harmony. Harmony, 
speaks of the longitude and latitude in their hearts. Ding Village's harmony contains elements of heaven, earth, and man. The Fun Ha River curves gracefully across the landscape. Ding Village lies just at the bend of the river, where abundant water always keeps the land moist. The cliff in the west protects from sand dust, while the gentle slope in the east is beneficial to agriculture. Evidence of human activity dates back to ancient times. Zhou Ti works for the Museum of Folk Customs. He is engaged in the study of ancient human fossils, and Ding Village is one of the most important excavation sites in China. The first Chinese hominid fossils were found here. In ancient times, people adapted to the environment in this area. Now they change their surroundings. However, they insist on adhering to one principle, that's to live near water, because harmony between man and nature is the most important thing. It is rare to see villages in the same place as hominid sites in China. This proves that Ding Village has been able to sustain human life since ancient times. From another perspective, it also indicates that human activities have not caused destruction to the environment here. The people have always respected nature. The construction site of Ding Village, along with the structure of all the houses, were all in accordance to the teachings of the Book of Changes. So it's five elements and the eight diagrams. It shares the same truth. The door we are entering now is called the Southeast Door the southeast corner of the courtyard. Do you see? The southeast. That is right. This is called the Door of Shun. These houses in Ding Village actually emphasize the north. Also, among the eight diagrams, the north is also called the House of Can and Door of Shun. It is also said that this pattern allows unimpeded access and is advantageous for the owner along with his descendants. How did they choose the site? Villagers decided that the Ding Village's construction, along with the yard pattern, followed the same principle under the same culture. Before and after autumn, the date trees in front of Sanyi Temple hang heavy with fruit. For over 600 years, these ancient date trees have been witness to how the ancestors of Ding Village have worked hard to cultivate the land and settle down here. In the care of the village's descendants, the trees continue to bear fruit, and this is a testament to their spirit of harmony. Yeah. 